which way are you going to be heading out of the car park then, Doro? Well, I'm not supposed to go that way, so I'm guessing it'll be this way. Oh, oh no, I can. Sorry, what am I talking about? Yeah. It's just saying that I cannot go that way, so it's just... That's it. Good, because it's level with the end yeah, of the line, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and it's just shut there. That's it. One last check. Yeah. Anybody behind you? So, there's the speed limit, yeah? Five, Five mile an hour. Yeah. So we're looking for... For any obstructions behind me. Yeah, absolutely, for the new road, something could have followed you around, but I'm just looking for when that ends, really. But it's gonna be the end of this car park, and then we're gonna be on to a 30. Anything joined us behind? I can see a van behind okay. me. Okay. A bit more speed as we come round. Pop yourself in second, get that clutch back up. Because you're already doing second gear speed, you just wanna match the gear then. To the speed and make the engine smoother. So there's your next uh, repeater, if you like, mm. reminding you it's five mile hour. I think, um, I think, I know we're going faster, but it just seems a bit slow. It's that, too slow, yeah. That's yeah. like staying in first gear the whole way around there at five mile an hour. It's just there's no need for it. Yeah. Look, if it was Wednesday when they do, you know, and it's dead busy here or whatever, you might want to consider it. But so. Which way do you reckon? For round that roundabout? I'll go straight. That's it, because you've got giveaway lines there, and it's going to be 30 mile an hour on this new road. So turning right. Turning right. Any need to brake, or can we just go? Uh, I could have just gone. Could have just gone. You've got to think about it a bit earlier. Clutch on the floor. Because your car will roll anyway, because of the natural downhill sort of roll that you'll pick up. So we're going right. Right, yeah, third exit. I could have. Keeping them. Don't want to create too much space on that inside there. Because mm. a car could. And we're going to turn left at the next set of lights. So if you'd have thought more about just driving onto the roundabout, well done, then you'd have just gone, yeah. rather than thinking about all the things you need to do. So really, decide what you can and can't see and what you think you might do about it. Then start thinking about speed, because you might not need to even touch the brakes. Okay. All right, so there was a 40 sign just back there that I didn't mention. So it's a 40 mile an hour road. there yep so what's it mean when it's um why is it keep why is there like extra ones on the lamp posts then extra signs yeah there's another one there though you don't yeah. get them when it's it's just to remind you to keep it fluent yeah so that you don't speed you know you don't keep your speed down so to speak okay would you say that's correct i'm just going to add to that in a minute but what you got coming up it's a traffic light then I'm anything i'll take in the right door mirror no it isn't. could do couldn't it it might not realise why we're slowing down. Oh, I guess I'll go into second gear, clutch up. Perhaps. Sometimes if you've braked, you can just come off the brake and let the car just carry it straight back to the gas. Stay in the gear you're in. Take the next road on the right, please. Okay. Fantastic with the mirrors there. There's the 30 for the new road. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, no, I can. Second gear, which is good. Coming off. Still showing right. and turn a smidge later, look for where the centre line is. Okay. Because if there was a car there coming towards you, it would have been a bit slightly okay. awkward then. Fair enough. And this is a 30 limit because I saw the sign on the road as Good well. stuff. Now, coming back to the lamppost thing, you said, oh, tell me if it's, and, and, I'll, and it's a perfect opportunity now because we know it's 30. Okay. Is there going to be repeaters now on the lamppost? No. Why not? Because it's a general, it's general knowledge, isn't it? If you see lampposts on the other side of the road there, you know it's a 30 limit. Fantastic, but it could be 40, and if it is, they repeat it. There would be, yeah. There you go, good. So, our job, so knowing that, our job now is just to keep up to date with proceedings, really. Yeah. Keep topped up with what is and what isn't. We will be coming to some roundabouts shortly. So are we up to date with everything? Have I, have I addressed everything that we said it was good? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
just slowing down slowly because it's a it's a curb. So. I'm gonna send an application off tonight for uh, driving instructor of the year. All right. So <laughs> good luck. Yeah, I'm, I'm meeting up with somebody, and we're gonna. Uh, type it, I'm gonna say it, and then I've got somebody else coaching me to get the right content out of me, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If I sit there right, thinking about it, writing it, I'll take about two weeks to do it. Sharp bend. Good stuff. So around the bend, we're going to come to a roundabout. Okay. Okay. I'd like you to turn left there, please. That's first exit. Is that okay. all right? Yeah, yeah. Message received. So what gear again? We're going to go into second. Cool. Clutch up. Cool. And there's no one, so we're off. Lovely. So follow the road ahead. Any new speed limit signs coming in there, or are we still the same? I didn't see one. If we missed it though, we can use that old tool again, can't we, that we used before? Yeah, so lamppost, 30, 30. And there's nothing on them, is there? And it's priority for us for this. Good issue. stuff. But none for us afterwards. So this one indicates that's a giveaway to the other. So that means I need to. Keep going, don't even slow. Oh, I guess I could have, yeah, just gone because there's no one behind me. And, and position earlier as well. Stay out, don't even steer left. Straight okay. through. Yeah, that's true. If you come left, the car behind, what might it think? If you're ducking in and out like this? Then it might want to overtake us. Yeah, or it could start to and then you can't move, or you do move out to the right bank, whoops. Yeah. And he says, oh, I thought you was parking. Give him some space.
visors. Visors? Visors, yeah. okay. You don't have to stop, but you roll in at such a pace where if you lifted the clutch back up in second, up the in and the incliners, clutch on the floor, off the brake first. So you're not going to roll anywhere. Yeah, that's true. Revs first. You've got to think about the gradient you're on. Because you're on a flat there, it's uphill on the way up, but the because tyres are as such where they're on a flat bit. Hmm. Think that was okay? Yeah, it's fine. I think you could have just carried on driving that. Yeah, I think once you eased off and established the position, drive then. Okay. So let's take the next road on the left. Right. Okay. So there's no need to stop. Good stuff. Good so you have that last look as well to the right, because mm. I think we said earlier you did something, you didn't have that last check mm. to make sure it was still safe. So. I see something, in which case I'm going to reverse my decision, turning left please at the end of the road. So that should be your mindset. Okay. Keep following the road ahead for me. Alright. 
and then when you reach the next junction, you're not turning off anywhere, you're going to come to the end. Okay. Turn left when you reach the next junction. Okay. Keep me up to date with if there's any uh, any threats that you might have to deal with differently right. as well. Turning left, as in here. When you reach the end of this Idea. section. Sorry. That'll be your next left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry if I'm overcomplicating. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> so here. Yeah. Fair enough. He's training to look for specific things, I guess, as well, so that's part of it. Still dangerous, so I'll just continue. Good. Any comments? No, I'm happy with that. Okay. This is what you need to be aware of before you move on. Well, I need to check my right yep. mirror that someone's not coming, which I did. Cool. Just in that. And then if there's no one on, on yep. pavement, which there weren't. Nice one. And coming back in, I just check my left mirror. Nice one. Keep following the road ahead now. So we're going to look at, um, just expand on the junctions a little bit and okay. look at some junctions on inclines now. Okay. Now that you've got the, the basic sort of, not nailed but you yeah. understand it now, and it's a case yeah. of practicing it. Yeah. This is going to highlight even more why we should have that little roll at the end. Okay. So it'll all become apparent. What do you see coming up? I see a junction, and I'll need to turn left, there's the only way. It's a roundabout, you could turn right at it, but, oh, you'd, have it to go, but you'd have to go to the left first. Yeah. yeah? That's a roundabout sign, usually. Yeah. I'm going to turn left there, first exit. Did you need to drop the gear, or could you just drive on in third? Actually. Yeah. So, so eyes before feet. So, where are we going? Sorry. First exit left. First exit left. So. so, if you look and it's clear and you feel under control and the bend doesn't look too tight or no, too sharp, point. keep driving. Yeah. yeah don't um, create more work for yourself. Okay. Also, the car behind would it expect you to drop a second there? If you, it what do you think? No, it wouldn't. It just wouldn't expect it because it would see it's clear as well because of the nature of the roundabouts. We said they're open, didn't we? You can, in fact, that one's the probably the most open one you can find. At the end, turn left, please. Just, just here, and I can yeah. see it's a giveaway sign. Yep. So, first gear, first, first, first. Set the revs, balances, clutch, the revs on. Have a look. That's it. Get in the habit of holding yourself still and then balancing and having a look. I know the thing is it was clear there, weren't it? So that's probably why you why you did that. But this one isn't as gonna be as clear. So if you can get to that balancing point before the car would roll backwards, you can see the steepness there. Um, that's gonna be good. Do you want any help with it or do you want to give it a go? Try and give it a go. Don't forget the revs, that's crucial. Yeah. I'm gonna turn right at the end. Okay. And there's nothing behind, is it? Fantastic there. It's exactly what I was looking for. If you tried if you tried to do that last Thursday, it wouldn't have happened. No. Nope. Why wouldn't it have happened? Um uh, obviously getting used to the car. Yeah, getting used <laughs> to the That was our first meetup by the way, yeah, for the purchase of the camera. Yeah, yeah. It was just um well I guess because every every new learner is different, but for me I guess just repeating the basis, looking at the video, you know, the videos that you suggested and just going at it again and again and again until you get into the habit of doing it, I guess. Like you said, I'm not, I haven't mastered it yet, but I think I'm getting better at it, so to speak. Okay, the main, yeah, I agree with all that, but to be more specific, the point, the reason why that worked is because, number one, you're slowing down enough, early enough. And it gives me time to adjust, yeah. You li yeah, you leave, yeah, you, you, you've got time because you're leaving that little roll at the end before you get to the lines. Enough time to set revs, find bike balance, hold still, and then edge, and then look. You weren't really doing that as much before, so that's why it works there. So let's see if we can keep that going, shall we? Yeah. Because once we've got that and we know it's there, we're in a good position then to move forward with things. Yeah. Seen us and could have held back because we had priority there. 
Um, but then again, they were coming up the hill and things like that. But you only really meant to take that into consideration with larger vehicles. But it didn't really matter, did it? Really? I think, like you said, you've got to be mindful and supportive for vulnerable road users sometimes. And I say vulnerable, not vulnerable, but they are when you're a learner. You, you, you're more tense. Yeah, and you, it's new, so you've got to think the what's the word? Sympathetic? No, not sympathetic. Like just uh, prevent any hazard from happening. Let's just keep it at that. You just got to do your bit, and you're not. Yeah. So I'll go in second gear because it's a bit tight in here. Yeah. You're definitely using all your peripheral vision, I can see, when you're coming past things. Mm. Never seen you get close to anything yet once. Do you know what I mean by peripheral vision? Yeah, I do. Side vision. Close your eyes, yeah, which a lot of people don't use. If you wear glasses with thick frames, that can be an issue as well, guys, if you're yeah. interested. So, take next road on the right. Okay. I don't want you to cut the corner, though. Okay. It's really important that you don't because the more you continue around the bend, you can see around the bend before you turn in, so you know if anything's shooting down. True. Don't know how to have a head on collision, so well done to you there. And I'd like you to uh, take, well, uh, when you reach the end of the road, mm -hmm. turn left there, please. Okay, end of the road. Turn left. <laughs> Not next left or next right. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was tight, sorry, because she was coming. I agree. So, uh, do you know what you want to do? You want to pause for a bit longer at the junction and spot that before you merge out. Okay. Rather than. Yeah, you was fine to do it and nothing happened from it, but to be fair, I think it still was... look at keeping the clutch on the floor for longer, getting the speed down to a. It's that slow, you're almost stopped. Okay. Ah, he's waiting. Any bikes inside? So maybe I could prompt you by asking you if there's any danger. I'll be safe to steer out to the right. Yeah. Gonna hurt anybody, hit anything. And take the next road on the left, just after okay. these cars here. Okay. way to do it. Yours always starts lifting. It's a bit of left steer. Right now, well, don't do that. You start to find the bike while your foot's on the brake. What's the danger when you come off the brake? Quite close, aren't we, to these yeah, cars? What yeah. could happen? Well, I can, you know, cause an accident. Could surge forward because we, we've misjudged the bike. So, what you want to do, you want to put your handbrake on here. This can act as your third foot. Right foot now can go to gas. Find a gentle bite so that when you do release that, you're not going to fly forward, but you can edge. Okay. How's that for you? It's much better. Good stuff. So do use that. It's a very useful use tool. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to shake the myths of all. Oh, use handbrake at every junction, all that rubbish. We use it when it's useful. You know? So that was a downhill gradient, so that was useful because it stopped you rolling forwards while you set your feet up. Yeah. It was only a slight downhill, but... So come centre of your lane, you're more centre of the road there, left, 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 there. And, th and uh, just getting that speed up a little bit more. Because you can 
see that car positioning to the right because we've sticking at 26 there. Can you take, not this one, but the next road on the left? See what the black learner cars do? Yeah, next left yeah, there, please. Yeah, okay. You see, you had to put a bit of brake on at the end, like yeah. a bit of a, not a stab, but a bit of a, because you come off the brake as you lifted the clutch. So keep that brake on throughout the whole process of when you're changing from, what was it, third to second. second yeah. Braking, 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 clutch down, select second, still braking, braking, clutch coming up, still braking, clutch up, off, still braking. And if you feel you need to come off before that, then. You could have got through though, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You just needed to look left into the space that was available, not at the at the, at the, at the car. Mm -hmm. If you look at the car, you'll think, oh, a car, and stop. Look at what you could do. You know, like earlier when I said to you, mm -hmm. I said to you, look in your left door mirror. Let's do what we can to keep both, keep everything flowing. Even though there's a parked vehicle as well, or mm -hmm. I think it was on their side earlier. I think it was on Max Road earlier. Yeah, for anybody that uh, knows the area. Let's say I don't know. <laughs> but do, 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 you refer, do you know what I'm referring to? A max road as in max speed? No, it was just a road, a road earlier. But remember what I said, use your left door mirror, be careful of the rubble on the left. You know, the debris and the good Yeah, 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 that, that time. So same again now, I think we just could have kept going. If in doubt, you'd hold back before the Mini, but you was already positioned, really. See, from my past driving experience in, uh, in London, I just kept, that's something that's stuck in my mind. You don't want to make the, you know, at the driving test you'll have on a, what you call them, not an instructor, but um, what's the correct terminology for the guy who sits next to you with a pad? Uh, Drive an examiner. Examiner, thank you. Uh, you don't want to make him feel uncomfortable, so to speak. So um, that's why I guess sometimes I take the, the, um, the decision to kind of stop and not go into narrow, you know, tight spaces like just now when I stopped if you see what I mean so my instinct reaction is even though I would be I would be happy to go through you know uh, for the driving test examiner I don't want him to feel that was a bit tight you see what I mean yeah I know I know what you mean so for me it's still a bit because obviously I don't have the experience to judge spaces so to speak I you know in between but cars think, and, and pavement so yeah. my, my instant reaction I'd rather wait for the car to pass and not make my uh, the examiner feel uncomfortable or nervous so, you know well, well let's get one thing straight right now nothing should be different from these lessons to your driving test nothing whatsoever yeah. okay so if you do it here you do it on your test because the test should resemble real life driving now if you go in with that mindset you're more likely to be able to decide the best decision make the best decisions on on the drive okay. on the on the test so that's how we're going to practice this you know nothing's going to be different um, what the driving examiner might think if you stop is good job there weren't a car behind because we didn't need to stop then okay you know that's what i'd be thinking okay. everything should be progress 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 and look for a reason why you shouldn't make that progress, whether it be speed, whether it be positioning, where it be got coming through. Keep it fluid, keep it moving. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Take next left, just after this big wooden post here. Okay. Sounds to me like you've maybe been taught in 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 meters of the driving test in mind, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be like that. You should just be you Feel should natural. be you should be yeah you should be learning how to drive. Um, because the you'll find the test dead easy then. Do you know what I mean? To be fair, one of the main reasons why I failed my first test because I was nervous. I was extremely nervous coming out of the driving test center. And something that you pointed out in your videos is overthinking stuff. Mm. Yeah, you're supposed to be comfortable when you're taking your test. And if you know you can drive full stop, I would say you're gonna feel quite comfortable. Yeah. Let's take the next road on the right direction, please. Okay. Quite good, but it could be a little bit better. My braking, in terms of my braking. 
didn't, that was a bit of crash. I didn't think you needed to brake. Okay. Because you was in second, the clutch was up, and your braking was slowing us as we come down the hill. You're starting to veer slightly to the right before you turn. Okay. Keep so straight, keep straight, 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 and straight, and turn. Okay. Because if you start veering right, and then for whatever reason you can't complete your turn, where are, where are you stuck then? Well, the the car that was that was trying to turn left around, I didn't I didn't see that. I would make it you know difficult for him to come off the secondary road and into the main uh, road. I'm guessing that would be the problem. So the the problem would be if if for whatever reason you can't turn, you just stop structuring oncoming traffic. Yeah. The guy who was waiting. At the, at the giveaway here, for example, it was a black Astro, I believe. Mm -hmm. it, he's behind giveaways anyway, there, so he gives way to us regardless. At the end, turning left, please. Not too early with the clutch down, it's too early, that is. Mm -hmm. It's about 10 car lengths back. Okay. Yeah, so you'd be doing a bit of coat. That's why you feel like selecting second, because it's so early, you know, habit, habit has it that you select the gear to match, don't you? But a van coming so I'll just give him and what about this gap here we, we, we could invite a cyclist there couldn't we so I could yeah I need to pull closer keep the clutch on the floor off the brake first that's it I can go now I need to veer into the yeah so let's let's work on that timing we're going to come round back round we'll do that junction again okay and I really want to work on timing clutch shouldn't be down till two car lengths Roughly, roughly. Turning left, then, yes, please. From the lines. Turn right and then turn right. 
Can we go to the end? No. So who's got priority? It wouldn't be any wars, but I will try and zoom in. Okay. Not zoom in, but here we go. And now I think we have enough space. Okay, good. Nice planning there. Everybody kept moving. No need to stop it, so if you feel you can do that. It's better progress for the road and the flow of the traffic, so well done. Turning right, please, at the end. Right. How do you feel it's going? Much better, yeah. What's improved since last time we stopped? Since last time we stopped, uh, well, I think me getting my clutch, you know, in the right position as I'm coming towards the junction, so giving my, myself more time to observe, uh, and then getting my clutch up at the same time, you know, working my gas pedal. So as soon as I come to a junction, you know, I get to, um, pretty much the stopping position but at the same time I keep myself rolling so I get my foot off the get the brake pedal whilst I still have my clutch full down yeah and then I start breathing and then you know taking my foot off the clutch pedal so to speak and so that it goes up and up until it gets to the biting point fantastic fantastic yeah. okay so yeah pleased with that we can keep we've got enough now to keep developing with that without yeah, sort of just... staying super focused on it yeah, you yeah. Know? we're not certainly not gonna forget about it because I'm thinking um, maybe add a bit more sort of, we talked a, bit, a little bit about forward planning earlier in terms of speed limit. Yeah. What about adding more pedestrian crossings and traffic lights in the mix now? And yeah, yeah. Because that's going to highlight, yeah, of course. like we said, the risk behind, how close, what do we think is going to happen? Should we start pre-warning them? Before it even turns amber, we probably know it's going to. Sometimes I'm on, I'm on the brake light. I know it's going to change to amber. I'm already warning them. Mm -hmm. Things like that. And then, and obviously making sure that you know all the do's and don'ts with the lights and the differences. And so, I, I don't know, how do you feel? Are you yeah, right yeah. to start adding that in as well? Please, yeah, let's make it a bit more realistic, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so, what does a flashing amber light mean to you? Flashing amber means that it's soon going to be red, so you should be aware of it and prepared to stop. Right, so... Or is, it, or is that incorrect? It's, it is incorrect, because a flashing amber light mm -hmm. is only ever to get you going again. Okay, rather than when it's just stagnant amber. Yes, because okay. that's what leads to a... Or a steady amber, steady amber is what yeah. leads to a then a red. Mm -hmm. Flashing amber, the way you want to remember this, you know on a zebra crossing, Yeah. what do they do all day long? There, yeah. And it means go if it's safe to do so, doesn't true, it? True. Unless you need, unless somebody stood on the edge waiting, giving your body language, suggest, or about to, that they want to step on. Some people don't even do that; they just step on. They're a danger to themselves because <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. I won't go off on that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so the uh, pedestrian crossings are the same. Mm. Okay, that right. that is a good um, reference. Okay, because that if you stick in my mind, mm, because if you come up to that and you test it, it's flashing amber, and you stop, mm. car behind's going to think. Whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't expect it, and they're yeah. probably going to be too close, not paying attention, etc., etc. And you want to know that what you're doing is the right thing, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. As well. So, what's the difference between a pedestrian crossing and a traffic light? Pedestrian crossing, the I would say with pedestrian crossing, the, the light would switch faster than with a normal traffic light. Other than that... Um, yeah, they do, yeah, they do tend to, yeah. Um, thinking. Um, well, you would have the set of pedestrian lines before your traffic lights, I would say. Is that correct? Or are you looking for something else? You're right, really, what you're saying. But when, looking... in terms of looking down the road and anticipating, mm. pedestrian crossings won't change by themselves. They have to be pressed. Okay, fine, yeah. So, 
if you see someone, I see what you're saying. If you see someone coming up to yeah. the traffic light and they, you know, they're looking to push the button, then mm. I should anticipate the fact that the lights might switch immediately. So I would, I should have, I should be looking at my mirror, cover my brake pedal. That's it. And if I see someone close behind me, then yeah. I should be slightly pressing on the brake pedal so to give them, you know, warning that you know I might have to stop mm -hmm. in a very short time. Fantastic. And a traffic light can that change at any time? Traffic light? No, because you will have a, a flashing amber, right? Rather than a, a, a steady state of amber. So if you would see that the green line goes flashing, right? Then that, and it depends really on each situation. But if I have, let's say, two cars length between before the traffic light and I see the, the green light flashing, then I could still go for the junction, I would, I would think. Okay, just just pick up on a couple of points there. First, first of all, uh, the green light will never flash. Okay. All right. It'll okay. only be, ever be a solid green. Okay. And um, basically, traffic lights are usually on some sort of sensor mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. because the reason for traffic lights is normally a controlled junction. Okay. So, for example, let me, for the purpose of for you and, and for the people watching, I'll give you some examples here. Because this is going to help us to anticipate, you see. So, pedestrian crossings are just going to be in the middle of a road, really, not near a junction, for example. Okay. But if we look at, so, you know, just like that. Yeah. There's probably going to be shops either side, and that's why people regularly want to cross. Yeah. If we look at traffic lights, let's pretend that's not there. Okay. Right. Now, what it'll do, depending on the time of day and how it's programmed, it'll, it'll, from my experience, it'll just, if nothing's coming here, it'll let these keep flowing. Mm -hmm. But as soon as something triggers the sensor there, if lots of cars have come through here, it'll red light these. Mm hmm Yeah. And then it'll let, allow these to go, either turning to their right or turning to their left. Okay. Because basically, if we all went at the same time, that would mean that would be a T-junction. And because it's such a major road, it would it would be chaos, and that would be backlogged because it's probably the minor road, you know, because this is more of a ma this is like the the, the, the main road. the yeah, main one, the main road, yeah. and so that's why they do that. So basically, traffic lights can change at any point. So you know, always check your mirror on the approach to the lights just in case, and always identify where your solid white line is. Because have you ever heard of the point of no return? Yeah. What's when, that? When then? Basically, you've crossed the line. Uh, well, no, no return. Sorry, when you get when you get so close to a traffic light and there's it can well several 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 scenarios can happen you, if someone's behind you really close and you feel that by you stopping mm. before the junction yeah it might cause uh you know an accident the hazard yeah so you just take a decision mm -hmm. i would say right about maybe here yeah makes sense to just you know go with the flow so don't stop and just continue rather than okay stop good harshly yeah. you say that's correct yeah i would yeah, depending on your distance, depending on your speed, depending, and all those depending distance and speed from the solid white line, depending on what's behind, depending on how early or late the amber is, it's, you know. But um, I think most of it is not waiting until it turns amber to make the decision, thinking, mm. if this happened now, what am what I going to do? It? If it does happen, oh, it might, so I'm going to start just touching the brake pedals anyway to warn them, and then I've got more chance of stopping if it... So, Not in a disruptive way, but in a warning way. So let me give you a scenario. I'm about here. The light turns amber. Yeah. What do I do then? If there's no one, be if there's someone behind me, then I would go. Would you say that's the correct? So if let's say. Okay. I'm if you're there and you're doing five mile an hour, you should stop. Yeah. That if makes you're sense. there doing twenty-five mile an hour, you ain't stopping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it, there is no definite answer, and you've got to take into account. What's happening Speed, behind me? Speed, distance from the white line. What's yeah, distance behind. Remembering that this mirror is flat glass, gives a true representation of yeah. exactly where they are. Yeah. And I think if you'd been keeping up to the date with the driver behind and their characteristics, you're going to know whether they've been checking Facebook the whole time, or whether they've been paying attention on the, the phone board. or whatever. Mm. All these things are a factor. Okay. There is no definite answer. So, yeah. So that, that's your traffic lights, pedestrian crossings. The reason, basically, that the flash amber, right, is that the, some of the new, some, uh, most, um, even some pedestrian crossings have sensors on the top. Mm -hmm. So they, 
they detect when the crossing's clear and change it back. Mm -hmm. Whereas the older type just flash. They've got a set programmed period where they just flash. Mm -hmm. So most cars are still driving through while it's still flashing, but it would allow an old person to get across. It would allow them enough time normally. If it changes to green and there's still feet on the crossing, legally you shouldn't go through until it's completely clear and nobody else is about to step on. Yeah. If a pedestrian was already in the road, who would have priority? Pedestrian. Good stuff, yeah. All right, that's about it really. I just wanted to make sure we've gone through the do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. With that, there's much more I could, could go over, but I don't want to, I know you've done, I know you've got experience, so I don't want to sort of teach you to suck eggs too much. <laughs> are you Are you all right with that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, you learned a few more bits there? Yeah. Okay, let's put that into action, Practice, shall yeah. we? Yeah. Now, the other thing is, at the end of the road, we've got what's called a bit of a, it's like a bit of a, um, a bit of a Y junction in terms of visibility. Do you know what I mean by yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. What do you need to do to improve your visibility at a Y junction? Well, coming into, because I, I would assume that on, on our side of the road, there'll be two lanes, maybe. Sometimes there are. So if we're turning left, maybe there would be two lanes. So if there are two lanes, I should make sure that to cover my right mirror if I'm turning left. If you see what I mean? that you would do what so you have the wide junction right yeah so if you're turning left you check your right mirror no 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 yeah exactly i would just check my no the reason i'm saying as i'm coming to the junction mm. right so i'm turning left and coming up to the stop line i would want to just in case double check my right mirror that there's someone not coming too close to me from the right hand side if you see what i mean what does that that does that doesn't make any sense to you <laughs> um kind of let me tell you what I would just say, give you, uh, the advice I'd give you, and you tell me whether this is what you're thinking. I think it, it could be. Basically, visibility is going to be obscured from the left because of, it's not a T-junction where mm -hmm. you can look right and left and get good visibility. Because it's at an angle. You don't know what's coming from your left. Yeah, and so you'll probably just see my head, this headrest, and the, and the side pillar of the car. So you've got to, on the approach, be slow enough to look right and left and say, oh, I can't really see much left, so I'm going to put this amount of steer on, angle the car differently, make it into a T, and then you'll get good visibility both sides. I see. But unless you're slow enough and you're observing enough on the approach, you're not going to spot what you can't see, and you're not going to know where to steer in position. So you're telling me to, even though I'm coming, you know, steering into left, I would want to position my, my car pretty much in the middle, so to give me enough space to mm. see what's coming from the left and right. Dead square with the give way lines. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not inclined Not to the right. So perpendicular, basically, in a, like in a T-shape, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, all right. All right. Should we get going then? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the van to go through. Just lower your bite. There. Yeah. You're downhill anyway. Now that it's passed. Hand on your handbrake, could get gone before this transit if you keep scanning around. Okay. It's Mm, it's a bit right single on then. Gotta get your foot down now. Foot down, foot down, foot down, let's go. Gotta be thinking about it early. Right, there's a van I can get gone in time. So we're going left here. Turning right. Turning okay, turning right, okay. So we're going that way. Yeah. So let's start warning the van. There you go. That's it. Stay straight. Yeah. Stay straight. And then Yeah, look right and left as you're doing it. Clutch on the floor though. Keep looking. Right. Okay. Okay, keep the foot down. Keep it down. Go, 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 go. And second. Good. I could have gone a bit earlier. Just got to be authoritative. I love the fact that you're making them decisions and get the confidence to say, yes, there's time. This is reasonable. But, but then it's a case of keeping up to speed then. Because the initial decision would be okay. But then if you don't keep up, they're going to catch up and then it just throws the whole thing off. Yeah. All right, so what most people do, they move off, then come off the gas and then decide to accelerate. Mm. So you've got to move off, keep on the gas, upwards, upwards, upwards in speed and second, and upwards and upwards, and third, for example, that type of thing. So what we've got here, pedestrian crossings or traffic lights? These are traffic lights. They are, aren't they? Because they're controlling that, took that turn, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Good stuff. Is anything catching up at the sides? There is a car coming from Okay. That. No bikes or motorbikes or anything, no? I didn't check the left mirror. Okay. Because the road space narrows, doesn't it? Yeah. So as we, you know, it's important to know, especially we watched that video I just posted on bikes, that motorbike that passed us just. Yeah. 